Good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to this prayer at the close of the day. It is Friday, the 20th day of August, year of our Lord, 2021. I do pray this finds you well. Remember, tomorrow is our family fun day, which includes uh, some time of education, followed by uh, potluck and games, and then the, the almost famous Emanuel Lutheran Church talent show. Hope you can join us tomorrow. It's a wonderful afternoon of Christian education and wonderful fellowship amongst God's people. You do not have to be a member to come, uh, and so just feel welcome to come and join us and enjoy a nice afternoon. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and peace at the last, amen. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name, O Most High, to herald your love in the morning, your truth at the close of the day. I'm going to read to you from the daily New Testament reading assigned in the daily lectionary. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verses 1 through 13. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols. However, you were led Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking in the Spirit of God ever says, Jesus is accursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except in the Holy Spirit. Now, there are varieties of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are varieties of service, but the same Lord. And there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For to one is given, through the Spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge, according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the ability to distinguish between spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are empowered by one and the same Spirit, who apportions to each one individually as he wills. For just as the body is one, has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, Jews, Greeks, slaves, or free, and all were made to drink of one spirit. And that is the word of the Lord. Now Paul is going to continue with that next week, especially this imagery we hear at the end of the body, the body of Christ. And we are the body of Christ. Christ is the head. We are the body. And notice the language, Paul, here. Now, first of all, before I, I maybe unpack this language a little bit, you need to know, if you're going to read scripture, and unfortunately we do this in our day, we, we pull out one little verse here, one little verse there to win an argument off. We don't realize people are doing that because we're so poorly versed, no pun intended, in Scripture. You have to understand the context. That is really the first and perhaps one of the most important steps in applying and interpreting the Word of God, what God is trying to say to us. Now, if I were to ask you and pause for a moment and say, what is the issue Paul is dealing with as he writes to this church in Corinth, what would you say? Would you know? And you, you should. You know, he tells us back in chapter 1, it is divisions. It is disunity in the church. So finally here, as this letter begins to wind down, we hear in chapter 12 about, about how people are complaining or, or or claiming, and you can just imagine, this happens all the time, that I have this gift or I have that gift. People say, well, it sounds a little different in our world. You know, well, I gave to this church, or I've been a member of all the church. Uh, I, get, I give a lot of money to this church, or I've been a member of this church for X number of years. And we don't realize that, first of all, there is one God, and God gives gifts according to his will, according to his plan for what is good and how to... How to uh, how to uh, um, make his good happen in the world. And that there is no distinction of gifts. Some are more public than others. If God has blessed you with wealth and you can give a lot of money to the church, we rejoice in that. If God hasn't given you a lot of wealth 
and you are taking care of your sick parents, in the name of Christ, we rejoice in that. If you're a child that can really only sit there in the pew and maybe give some service to the church by coming and cleaning or doing stuff like that, we rejoice in that. We all have our roles. Now, the problem is when we start confusing those things, and this is really not the point of, of Paul's letter, but I just want to mention it sort of in passing because it comes up elsewhere, is that when we forget you know, what our vocations are and we look to other vocations, and maybe there is that going on here. It's like, well, I wish I could speak in tongues and I wish I could have this gift of interpretation of tongues and I wish I could have uh, this thing because sometimes they're more public and they seem to bring, bring more accolades. Uh, they often bring more stress and stuff like that, the more public things are. And it's not given everybody to, to be able to speak publicly. But, I, but there is this, this idea in the church that everyone's got to be able to do everything, kind of in our culture too, that you know, we're interchangeable in our roles and our genders and things like that, and that's not true with God. And so you have churches doing things like, okay, you know, we have to let everybody but the pastor conduct the service, whether it's children or, 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 or uh, people who aren't called to do it. Um, and then you have, you know, the pastors that think, you know, that they have to do everything in the congregation. They're not called to do it. I'm not a songwriter. I am not, a, 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 I, I don't, you know, I write, and I write a lot, but I'm not a, a playwright or something like that. Let God's people do that, whatever they're called to do. And rejoice in the different gifts that people have. And that gets us back to what Paul is saying here. At the end of this, he says, you know, there's only one body. And he's going to unpack this more tomorrow. And we'll probably continue this reading tomorrow night. There's just one body, and there are many members of that body. You know, there's the toe, the finger, the eye. Some are, are seemingly more important, but, you know, if you you stub your toe, your whole body knows it. You're doubled over and wincing in pain. Um, and we'll hear more about that tomorrow. We're all baptized by the one Spirit. Now, notice how many times in this reading, too, Paul says, you know, this is the gift of the one Spirit. And the point is, as we face divisions in the church, and every church has to fight divisions and stuff like that, is... What are we doing to build up the body of Christ? You know, are we doing things that divide us? And that really happens when we forget, you know, that everybody has different gifts and let them use their gifts uh, and let the, you know, let the people who have other gifts use their gifts, whatever it may be. I'm, I can sing okay. I'm not a trained singer, but there are people in the congregation who have beautiful voices and sing incredibly well. And of course, what do we do? We let them sing. Uh, I am not a musician. I don't know how to play the organ. Imagine it's like, well, you know, this is really the pastor's role. And I go sit down in front of the organ and I plunk away. Well, that's going to be a disaster. Or if I ask you, if I ask you uh, like this one, this is kind of a common thing in the church, yeah, that multiple readers for this service. Now, there are times that has to happen. And there was an, uh, we hear about it in the New Testament, there was a job, a vocation in the church called the reader. I'm guessing that probably led me. That's all I can say is guessing because we don't really know. But that is mentioned in Scripture, let the reader understand. Now, if you saw ancient texts, it's just you know, writing with no spaces from, from side of the page to side of the page, top and bottom, because paper was so scarce. So people were trained in how to look at that and, and put the spaces in when they were breathing, just like we talk, and make sure they were enunciating and accenting. And, and getting the force along. And that took some work. You know, that wasn't printed like it is for us today with paragraphs and, and things like that. And that sometimes is an interpretation problem for us too. But in modern times, you know, reading is part of the proclamation of the word. It really is my job. It's part of the sermon. I've been working with the text all week, uh, often you know, for years, I understand. Now, some of you are probably sitting there going, no, this, no. But I want you to think about it in this way, what we're called to do uh, what our vocations are, and to stay within our vocations. Uh, there's many things I can't do, but this is what I have been called to do. Um, so think about that, too, about you know the actions that we take in church and, and ask yourself this question when you come up with an idea or something like that. Is this going to lead to the building up of the church or to divisions in the church? Why do I want to do this? Is it to bring attention to myself? Um, you know, and then, you know, we have to think of the broader context, too. What is this going to do with our relationship with the other churches in the area? Meaning, uh, you know, particularly the churches that, uh, of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, but all the churches. You know, when I decide to do something, that affects all the churches. And we end up competing against each other. And, and you, know, you hear it in the way people talk. You know, our church is, offers this and offers that. That's the language of business. We, this is how we should talk. You know, my church proclaims Christ and Him crucified. What else do you need? 
you know, what else is going to save you? Uh, there's nothing else that's going to save you. It doesn't matter what sort of little side ministry your church has. They might be important, showing the love of Christ, but they aren't going to save you. So uh, I see we're going quite long already with this, but just keep this in mind. You know, this idea that comes up over and over again, because it is the overarching thing in 1 Corinthians, is unity. You know, disunity is destructive, as we see today. So ask yourself always this, you know, what am I doing? What are we doing as, a, as individuals, as maybe a church council, as the church, and then you know, the church is an area to build up the body of Christ? It doesn't mean to change and water down doctrine. It's not what I'm talking about. It's not what Paul's talking about. What Paul is dealing with, like, people are saying, well, I have this gift, and I have that. They're, they're competing with each other instead of rejoicing with the gifts that everybody has that we all need to make make you know life in the church bearable and take all, all these little tasks to be done. Uh, just one little point. You know, if I had to worry about all these little things like bills getting paid and things getting repaired and um, you know the electric bill getting paid, I wouldn't have time to do things like this. I wouldn't have time to, to study like I need to so I can give the word of God to you. Um, I'd be an administrator or a, you know, a facilities manager. They're all very important tasks, but it's not what I'm called to do. Understand that, right? Okay. Let's move on by confessing our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Lord, now you let your servant go in peace. Your word has been fulfilled. My own eyes have seen the salvation which you have prepared in the sight of every people, a light to reveal you to the nations and the glory of your people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Lord God, Heavenly Father, keep us ever mindful of our responsibility as Christians to seek for the upbuilding of the body of Christ, the household of God, to seek unity as it may be found among us. Bless us with wisdom and discernment as we face the many many things we, we need to face as brothers and sisters in Christ and just the administration and conduct of the divine service. And may we again strive for unity in all things. Heavenly Father, we ask you for favorable weather, particularly as it's becoming increasingly dry here and our crops are beginning to be stressed. We ask you that according to your good and gracious will, that you would provide the necessary moisture and favorable weather uh, as these men and women who work so hard to uh, raise the food that you use them to provide, that they their needs would be met and uh, their bills would be paid and that through them, our community and indeed our nation and world might be fed. Heavenly Father, be with those who continue to suffer for your name's sake, our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, our brothers and sisters in Haiti as they continue to recover from the effects of not only political turmoil, but an earthquake and storms. We ask you to protect our fellow citizens overseas, uh, whether they be soldiers, and uh, members of the armed forces, or people, citizens that are in uh, in countries, particularly Afghanistan, that are in political turmoil. We ask you to keep them safe and allow them to be brought home safely to those whom they love. Heavenly Father, we ask you that uh, you would hear the prayers of those who are crying out to you for healing and also hear our prayers as we, as we intercede for them. We ask you to be with Jason, Kelly, Jack, with Steve, with... Uh, all those, again, who are crying out to you with uh, the members of the military, again, and we pray that you bring them home safely. Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, 
For it is he who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Visit our dwellings, O Lord, and in your great mercy defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of your only Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. I thank you, my Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have graciously kept me this day. And I pray that you would forgive me all my sins where I have done wrong and graciously keep me this night. For into your hands I commend myself, my body, soul, all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power over me. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. And I'm going to sing a little bit of hymn number 644, Beloved. I've sang this for you a number of times, and you'll be familiar with it. But this is uh, one of the great hymns of the English church. The church is one foundation. The church is one foundation, is Jesus Christ her Lord. She is his new creation by water and the word. From heaven he came and saw to, to be his holy bride. With his own blood he bought her and for her life he died. Though with the scornful wonder the world sees her oppressed, by schisms rent asunder, by heresies distressed, yet saints their watch are keeping, their cry goes up how long, and soon the night of weeping shall be the morn of song. And that stands as one and three of hymn number 644, The Church is One Foundation. With that, my brothers and sisters, I bid you a pleasant evening. And by God's grace, we'll see you tomorrow night. Good night.